Good morning and welcome to our 10 minutes at 10. So we are Harryless today. He's at home doing some stuff. Um, so today I wanted to talk to you a little bit about credit control. It's a really hot subject. It's really, really important. And it's one of those things that we just sometimes don't like to do. So I often talk to um, people about cash flow in their businesses and you know where the cash is going to and from. And a common misconception or a common fear is that A, credit control is too difficult and B, it's not really something we like doing. We're all very good at making the sale, but we're not necessarily very good at asking for the money after the sale. There's a bit of you know embarrassment perhaps or awkwardness, um, especially if the debt gets a little overdue. So I wanted to talk to you a little today about how we can set up fairly simple and straightforward but effective credit control procedures in Zero. So let me just switch my screen over and share my screen with you and I'll show you our uh, Zero account here. So there are five things we really need to be getting on top of. We need to be posting all of our bank receipts first. So it's super important to get those bank receipts posted before we do anything else on credit control. That way, when we do send the statements out, we know that they're absolutely spot on and up to date. So let's make sure that everything is posted in our bank account. So we're going to check our bank account. We go to our reconcile cash. Now, this is a demo screen, a demo uh, system, which is actually a little bit slow today. So you can see that there are some transactions here that aren't posted. So I'm just going to go through and post a couple of these. So let's do a find and match on this one, Jerikida, um, which, you know, typically there isn't one in there. So this is something that perhaps I need to put a discussion on here and I would discuss with accountant let me come out with that one now so you'd go through your bank and you'd post all of your um, receipts I'm not going to do all of these today because that's not the focus of today's um, session so we would go through and make sure all receipts are posted we would then go and run our age receivables report now, in Zero, there are several aged receivables reports. Um, the one I particularly like is this aged receivables detail report. I'm going to tick or press the, the little blue button there to blue star it and turn it into a favourite report. That way, when I go to my accounting menu here, you'll see that the um, aged receivables detail now appears in my menu because that's something that I want to use quite often. So I'm going to click into this report and I'm going to start to review my age receivables. Now, this report always defaults to today's date, which is great. And you can see that we've got some age receivables that are one month or three months old. So they're or two months old. So we've got some that are a little bit overdue. What we don't have in this report in this zero default is a total column. So I'm going to go and add that. Add the total in there so I've just gone into the settings add my totals and I'm going to update that now this is really handy for credit control because I can see the total amount of cash that is owed by month and in total so um, basket case owes us 1676 pounds at the moment and one of those is one month overdue one of those is current so I'm not overly worried about that one but I'm probably going to worry about this one. And if I've got any that are sitting in the three months and older columns, I'd be quite worried about those and I'd be chasing those. So we've now got a couple of approaches that we can focus on. We can either start calling people from here and go straight into a telephone call, but then often people will say, I don't have a copy of the invoice, I don't have a copy of a statement, didn't know anything about it, etc. So I would personally go backwards and I would send a statement first. So if we go into business and go into the sales overview, let's open that in a new tab so we've got two screens running side by side. After reviewing my um, age receivables and seeing where my position is at today, I'm going to go and issue some statements and send those to all of my clients. 
Now I can see here a slightly different summary. So I can see that there are three invoices that are overdue or three accounts that have overdue invoices on. Now this screen always defaults to the previous month. So I need to remember to change that to the current date and then update. So now my three overdues has turned into four overdues because there were a couple in October that were outstanding for payment. So what I'm going to do now is I'm only going to send statements to these four that are overdue. I'm not going to send statements to the ones that aren't overdue because I'm not chasing those for payment yet. I've got an option here whether to send an activity statement which shows everything or an outstanding statement which just shows those that are outstanding. Now because I'm actively chasing and doing my credit control today, what I actually want to do is just the outstanding. So I'm going to update that and then I'm going to email each of these four people who owe me money and I'm going to send them a statement. Now if there was a missing email address, zero would tell me and there isn't so that's great. I'm going to use my standard branding theme and these are all slightly overdue so I can have, I can use my basic invoice uh, email template. Now this is going to send the same email out to four different customers. If I had one that I knew was particularly overdue, I would send an email chaser to all three with a nice chaser that says, just a reminder um, that these amounts are still outstanding, please could you pay up. If I had one that had a big amount of arrears, a large amount of arrears, perhaps they were older arrears, I might want to write um, a particular custom message to them. So I would not send them a global email. I'd untick them from the list. I'd go back into them afterwards and then I'd write them a custom email here that says, you know, your invoice is due. It's, over, it's outstanding for X many days. Um, if there's an issue, let me know. If you're going to pay, next steps might be to take legal action. So my next escalating email might be a bit stronger, but I wouldn't want to send that out to everybody. I would only send that out to the one that was particularly overdue. In this instance, I'm just going to send a global email to all of these people because they're all overdue. So I would send that and zero sends them all out and they're gone. Now, if I go into basket case, you can see what the statement looks like. This is what the client would have received. They wouldn't receive a copy of the invoice though. So if you ring them later on and they tell you they don't have a copy of the invoice, that's a slightly different issue. You've now got to go and back into your zero account and send that invoice out. Now, coming back to our age receivables, I've now sent all of my clients a list of their outstanding invoices. So now I might start calling them. So there's two ways that we can start doing this. Now, number one is to work from, if I go back into my business, into my sales overview, number one might be to work through my overdue payments list. And I can do that from here. If I click on this option here to add dates and notes, I can see my contact details, my phone number for each of my individuals. So I could ring um, Bob Partridge up, I could chase his email, and he might say to me that he's going to pay on Monday, for example. And I could put my expected payment date in, say that he's going to pay on Monday the 7th, and I can save that. And then now, instead of looking like it's overdue, we know that it's due for payment and it's going to be paid on the 7th of October. So if I just add another one here, so they're going to pay, um, say, end of month. If you could spell that right, end of month. And then save that one. If I now go back into my all sales invoices, I can see that we've got some that are awaiting payment. Uh, it's probably easier to see it in the awaiting payment tab. We've got these ones that are expected. If I swap this around so that these are on top. I can see that these are expected in October and in 
the you know ones at the beginning ones towards the end so this is really useful for doing your actual chasers what this doesn't show you is the whole position so i might have just rung um, port and philip up um, looking for one invoice not realizing that there are two which is why it's quite handy to have these two reports side by side so here allows you to add your details in and to add your payment references and your expected payment dates and chase your invoices this one shows you the context of how the invoices are outstanding. So I might not have chased um, basket cases a September invoice, but I might have chased their August invoice. Now, what this report doesn't show you, now that we've put all these um, notes in, is what those notes are. So you couldn't, unless you go through and look at all of the last payment notes so you can see here if I've just clicked on the expected payment date I can see that this invoice was going to be paid on Monday and a payment is expected on the 7th of October but I can only see that by clicking in now one of the things that we do um, with some of our clients is if I open these two invoices you can use the reference field in here so that reference might be and this will be one because it's copied from a particular invoice but we could use that to say chased um, pay on Monday uh, Monday 7th October my mic's in the way so it's uh, tricky to see the screen and this one, I might say, if I'm going to edit this one, in my reference, I might say, exclamation mark, exclamation mark, disputed. Now, if I go back to, I'm going to close those two tabs because I don't need those anymore. I still can't see them in here because this is, if I do refresh, I can now see the notes in here. I can see that this one is chased and this one is disputed. So that's a little handier. So I can see my last payment note. Now you do have to remember if you use the reference field to add your chaser notes, um, you do need to remember to take those off if you have to send a copy of that invoice to the client or maybe you don't maybe you keep that in there so that it's evident that they know that you know that they know that uh, you know th this invoice has been chased and it's overdue so i personally leave these chases in because it's a note attached to the invoice um, some people don't like it so they take them out if you then look back at your age receivables detail and let's go to our report settings and Let's see if we can, we can't put the reference, we can put the reference on that one. Let's see if that's updated and there we go. So the invoice reference allows you to view your payment note and imagine if we put our payment references um, in this reference field for all of our chasers, all of a sudden all your information and your status on your age receivables is all in one place. Now. That's a really handy way to use Zero for credit control. So post all your bank receipts, run your age receivables reports, decide who to chase and when to chase them. Send them a statement first so that there's no dispute when you have that conversation with them and then call them and chase. Now the step that I've deliberately missed out in the middle is to turn on invoice reminders. Now invoice reminders is a functionality in Zero. You'll find it in the settings. Um, if Zero has uh, a default setting that allows you to remind customers when their invoice is overdue. Now this works on an invoice by invoice basis. So we've just sent a statement that shows them their whole account, but the invoice reminders will only work for the individual invoices. So it's great for chasing things that are say seven days, 14 days, 21, and you can add say a 28 day reminder, and you can add, say, a 35-day reminder. Actually, let's make this 40 days so that it's spread a little bit. And this 40-day reminder could be um, a letter before action that says, if you don't pay now within the next 10 days, we'll take you to court. 
Now zero is only going to allow you to do five lots of chaser, so use them wisely. Seven days, 14, 21, 28 is good. Then the middle of the following month, so if you haven't received anything by the end of the month, maybe 60 days is when you start taking the next steps. Might seem a little bit soon, but this is your money that they owe you, so why not be chasing it? Now you can also set zero so that it doesn't chase invoices, say, that are under £10, because you don't want to be reminding people for you know small insignificant amounts. Or maybe your cutoff is £1 because 10 seems a bit uh, too low or too high. Um, so invoice reminders is really good. I would strongly recommend you turn those on. You can turn them on for everybody globally and you can turn them off for individual items later. So say, for example, we've got um, a disputed item. Let's go back to our statements. And we're going to look at our age receivables detail, which we saved earlier. And if we don't want to chase this disputed item here, the 28th of September, we can turn off invoice chasers for that particular invoice, and then it won't be chased. Um, so that's a really good way. Or you can do it for a whole client. So again, that's quite handy not to chase things that are overdue for clients that have a disputed transaction. You don't want to upset them. Um, I would turn those on, on the, on the whole, for most clients. It's there's no reason why you shouldn't. Most clients will then pay uh, on a gentle reminder. So one of the reasons why I would turn that on is to get that encouragement there. It's slightly annoying to send it weekly, niggles them a little bit, but it keeps you front of mind when that cash comes into their bank account. And if they the cash comes in, they know they're going to get reminded from you next week because you haven't paid it. They're more inclined to pay you than if you're not reminded. So polite, persistent reminders gets the job done. So that's credit control from me today. Quick, simple and effective by using the tools that are already available to you for free in Zero. So that's all for today. Thank you very much and I'll see you tomorrow. Bye for now.